good afternoon today this class i'm taking to account the accounting the different accounting standards in the last class i told you about this accounting standards the need and the necessity of accounting standards now we are going for the accounting standards at present we are having 32 accounting standards and out of these 32 accounting standards five accounting standards are revised and what are the 32 accounting standards that we come across and it is we are dealing with that first one is as1 disclosure of accounting policies second one is valuation of cash flow statements fourth one is contingencies and events occurring after balance sheet date fifth one is priority period prior, prior period and extraordinary items and changes in accounting policies accounting 6 depreciation accounting accounting 7 accounting for construction contracts i mean 8 as 8 accounting for research and development as 9 revenue recognition as 10 accounting for fixed assets as 11 accounting for effects of changes in foreign exchange rates as 12 accounting for government grants accounting I mean as 13 accounting for investments accounting I mean as 14 accounting for amalgamations as 15 accounting for retirement benefits in the financial statements of employees accounting 16 borrowing costs accounting 17 segment reporting and accounting 18 related party disclosures accounting 19 leases accounting 20 eps that is earnings per share and accounting 21 consolidated financial statements as 22 accounting for taxes on income taxes on in, uh, taxes on income as 23 accounting for investments in association associates in consolidated financial statements as 24 accounting opera i mean discount uh, discontinuing operations accounting i mean as 25 interim financial statements as 26 intangible assets as 27 financial reporting of interest on joint ventures as 28 impairment of assets as 29 provisions contingent liabilities and contingent assets as 30 financial statements recognition and measurement as 31 financial statements presentation as 32 financial statements disclosures these are the 32 economy these are the 32 accounting standards that we are having and some of them I want to tell you that they are revised, they are revised and there are total five revised items, the revised accounting standards they are with us. First one is valuation of inventories, second one is prior period and extraordinary items and changes in accounting policies and third one is depreciation accounting and next one is accounting for effects of changes in foreign exchange rates and next one is yeah yeah these are the five accounting standards that were revised by the people as well as the experts now what we are doing is first one one by one we are going and some of them I am going to tell you and remaining things that I am going to explain in the next class. First one is disclosure of accounting policies. What is disclosure of accounting policies? Whatever it may be the policies adopted by the business units, companies and corporations, they must be disclosed, they must be shown to all the people without any hiding. Then only people they can able to understand what procedures, what systems they are following and in what way we have to 
go for them and in what way we can take the results or whatever it may be that they, they want that is a full i mean first accounting standard that we come across disclosure of accounting policies every policy you have to take into account and every policy you have to show to every person that is most essential that we come across in this explanation of accounting standards the second one is valuation of inventories so all the people they have a doubt that what are the inventories inventories are nothing but the closing stocks that we come across and the closing stock it may be in working progress raw materials and finished goods when we come across the closing stocks in raw materials work in progress and finished goods how we have to deal in what way we have to deal and when we come across the closing stock the closing stock will be in quantity but for accountants the value of the closing stock it is very very essential so how to value the closing stock there is a formula for that there is a formula for that closing stock is valued either at cost price or market price whichever is less so all the people they have to follow and they must follow this rule closing stock whatever it may be whether it may be raw materials whether it may be work in progress whether it may be finished goods it must be valued either at cost price or market price whichever it may be whichever is ema less at that price only you have to value that is about the valuation valuation of inventory second one cash flow to me third one not second one third one cash flow statements you see here in this context we have to tell that how much cash we are receiving and how much cash we are giving giving or going it is quite but natural in our general life how much cash we are getting from where what is the source for us to get this cash amount and in the same way where it is going that is how we are spending that is most essential every person they have to take into account the payment in a very responsible manner for what payment we are doing whether that payment is necessary or not we have to take into account and for that important and necessary payment we have to make payment that is we have to give the money and for minute things the payment should be postponed and it can be postponed so the second important thing is what are the sources that we are coming across from where we are getting the money for where we are getting the cash because don't be of that opinion that we will come across cash every day every time only one time only we will get the cash and we have to take the cash and we have to pay the cash okay in a perfect manner in a remain responsible manner otherwise okay you will come across complete cash outflow so here when we are going for cash flow statements we have to take into account what is the cash inflow what is the cash outflow one thing you have to keep in mind is this is taking into account the fiscal cash and along with this cash i mean cash flow statement we are having and one more statement that is nothing but funds flow statement in the future classes we will come to know about the cash flow statement and fund flow statement and what is a fund i'm asking all of you what is a fund what is the correct meaning for a fund and at the end of this i'm going to tell you about the answer of this meanwhile you please think and tell me in the comments box what is a fund and what is a fund flow statement okay now we are going for the fourth one that is contingencies and events occurring after balance sheet date every businessman whether he may be a company person whether he may be a business executive business i mean commercial undertaking proprietor all the persons they will prepare the balance sheet at the end of the year that is on 31st march of a particular year and after the preparation of balance sheet again those people they'll come across some contingencies 
and events and how to do the, how to take into account the contingencies in what way we have to show these contingencies this is very very essential for any business unit after preparation of balance sheet please don't be of that opinion that we won't come across anything after preparation of balance sheet after preparation of balance sheet only we will come across the contingencies and these constant contingencies you have to show in a different manner in the balance sheet and you have to take them into account you have to see from where these contingencies and events they occurred in what way we have to show that in what way we have to record that and we have to show that whether it they must be taken into balance sheet or whether it must they must be corrected and they must be shown in the other balance sheet all these things every businessman and every commercial undertaking or every company they have to look after this is about contingencies or events that occur after the balance sheet date the next one is that is the fifth one prior period and extraordinary items and changes in accounting policies prior period that is previous year okay and extraordinary items okay sometimes we'll come across extraordinary items when we are doing a particular business we'll come across not only ordinary business I mean, items but also extraordinary items that we come across and these extraordinary items how we will show them in preparing this accounting policies whether we have to take in that year or whether we have to postpone that in the next year all these extraordinary items that we have to take into account so for example when you take into account all the things you will take and if you come across discount on issue of shares okay preliminary expenses formation expenses these two things these examples some are some of the examples and these are things they have to be taken into account okay because whatever it may be the preliminary expenses that we come across that is uh, formation expenses or okay the expenses incurred before forming a company we'll call that thing as preliminary expenses so these preliminary expenses and formation expenses they must be written off okay they must be written off as and when necessary if they are very heavy, high amounts what in what way we have to show that whether we have to take that into the financial statements or whether we have to do some other adjustment these things that we will come across these are nothing but the extraordinary items that will appear after preparation of the balance sheet or in the accounting policies the next one is sixth one depreciation accounting this is a very very important topic for all the subjects for all the people who are dealing with accounts depreciation what is this depreciation the actual meaning of depreciation is nothing but wear and tear amount when we take an asset and when we are using that asset continuously for a span of periods naturally the value of that asset will come down because due to wear and tear amounts and this wear and tear amounts we will take that as depreciation and we have to charge the depreciation in the financial statements unless otherwise we won't charge we won't come to know about the real cost of the asset and depreciation it is a charged loss but not a trading loss people they have to understand this it is not a trading loss at all it is nothing but a charged charged loss that we are charging and in depreciation we will come across different methods there are eight methods to charge depreciation and we we'll learn that after some time okay next after depreciation we will come across a I mean construction companies contracts of construction companies accounting for construction companies construction contracts okay some people they will go for construction purpose construction contracts in that what we have to do in what way we have to go for the accounting system whether we have to go for the financial system or whether we have to go for cost system because contracts you will come across both in financial accounting as well as in cost accounting 
so when we go for financial accounting in what way we have to deal with this construction contracts okay and remaining items we will discuss in this thank you please do subscribe and give your comments okay wherever you come across any